What up, what up, what up? I hope you guys are doing phenomenal. As you guys know, it's Coach Chat here, the CEO of the Next Level Coaching Academy and the creator of the Assistant Coach Academy. And oof, I'm excited about this one. And uh, the reason I'm excited about this one uh, is because we are going to go over the unsexy shit. You know, there's so many business gurus out there that all they teach is sales, marketing, sales, marketing, sales, marketing. And they stay away from the unsexy shit because unsexy shit doesn't sell, right? And it's not marketable, all right? But the, the sexy shit is what scales. The sexy shit, if you, if you pay attention to this unsexy shit that I'm about to talk about, I promise you, your business is going to scale a lot faster than focusing on anything that these other gurus are talking about, okay? So sit tight, we're going to talk about it, but before we do, uh, I want to talk about NLCA Live, all right? So got a little housekeeping for you guys, uh, and I want to break down all this very, very fun stuff. I don't think I'm actually even talking into my mic. Wow, this is embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> my mic actually isn't plugged in, so I'm talking into the computer. Let me go ahead and plug this in very quickly. Bear with me, guys. As you guys know, Kyle, don't edit this. I like things fully transparent. All right, let's see if that's working. Hello, hello. No, that's on mute. All right, I think we are good. I think we are good. Okay. So housekeeping, housekeeping, all right? We're gonna talk about NLCA Live, the best, and I'll say it again, the best in-person live event for personal trainers, health coaches, nutrition coaches, and coaches alike, all right? So when is the event? The event is April 23rd, April 24th, so it is coming up. I think we have 60 days. I actually have a countdown. Yeah, 66 days as of this recording until NLCA Live, all right? So April 23rd, April 24th, it is in the lovely booming city of Austin, Texas. It is gonna be hosted at Hotel Van Zant, which is on Rainy Street, Rainy Street is one of the uh, most fun streets, most fun. I don't know if that's actually English, but uh, no, that is English. The funnest would not be English, but this is one of the most fun uh, streets in downtown Austin. So really freaking amazing location. All right, so let's break it all down. I'll try to be super quick and then we can get into the content, but the event is in 66 days. It's at the, it's at Hotel Van Zant, which is in downtown Austin. Quite honestly, you could stay at any hotel in downtown Austin. Uh, downtown Austin isn't like New York City. It's it, it's not a 20 minute drive. If you if you're on one end of the city to the other other end of the city, it might take 10 minutes. There's literally no traffic in this city. So you could stay at probably any hotel in a 20 mile 20, 20 mile radius of uh, the event location and be about 20, 30 minutes away from the actual event. So hopefully that's helpful information for you. All right. So what I want to go over is I want to go over the speakers. I want to go over the layout of the event. I want to go over the tickets. I'm going to go over all this information with you guys. All right, let's go over speakers. So we got Dela McDevitt, the CEO of DLD and the co-CEO of NLCA and ACA. We have Joelle Samantha, who is the CEO of Level 10 Coaching and also the CEO of Fit Coach Pro. We have Cody McBroom, who is the CEO of Tailored Coaching Method. We have Joseph Shihei, I think I pronounced, I'm sorry, Joe, I, I think I butchered your last name, but he is the CEO of Cure Nutrition. We have myself, we have the one, the only, Jordan freaking Syatt, the CEO of the Inner Circle. And yes, the Jordan Syatt, that is the ex-trainer of Gary V. We have uh, Casey Joe, who is the CEO of KJO Coaching and HMC Certification. We have Lacey Daughtery, who is the CEO of Raising the Bar Wellness, and she's also the NLCA Mindset Coach. We have Sam Miller. Sam Miller Science, that is, who is the CEO of Sam Miller Science. We have Brooklyn Hillenbrand, who is the CEO of Built to Be. We have Sean McDevitt, who is the CEO of DLD and also a life coach. And then last but not least, we have Brad Jensen, the sober bodybuilder, who is the CEO of Key Nutrition. All right, let's go over the itinerary. 
All right, so on Saturday from 9 to 10.30, Sean and Lacey are going to do a business mindset workshop. So it's going to be very interactive for the first hour and a half. From 10.30 to 11.30, we got Cody McBroom. From 11.30 to 12.30, we have Casey Joe. Cody McBroom is going to be talking about how to show up as your authentic self. Casey Joe is going to be talking about uh, change-based communication strategies and how, and how to motivate individuals. Then we break for lunch. Lunch is paid for. All right. So you get lunch paid for. Then from 1.30 to 2.30, we have Sam Miller. From 2.30 to 3, we have a break. From 3 to 4, we have Joseph, the CEO of Cure Nutrition. He's going to talk about your life's mission. From 4 to 5, we have Jordan Syot, who's going to talk about, what do you think he's going to talk about? Building your audience. All right. From 5 to 6, we have dinner and drinks, also paid for. And then at 7.30, we have a rave, an after party. I hired three DJs, three DJs. All right, this is going to be EDM-based music. You guys know me. You guys know my group. We love EDM-based music. We love headbanger music. So I got three DJs. Uh, I'm not going to disclose names yet, but there's some really big names, honestly, like people who like headline massive shows uh, that I that I decided to dip into my savings and do because that's just, I always want to be the best. All right, so I went ahead and I did it. It's going to be freaking awesome. I'm really excited for the after party. All right, so that's the 23rd. The 24th, from 10 to 11, we have Sean talking about the intangibles of online coaching success that no one talks about. From 11 to 12, we have Joelle Samantha, who's going to talk about client retention strategies. From 12 to 1, we have Brooklyn Hillbrand, who's going to talk about growing a social media presence and building a uh, caring audience. From one to two, we have lunch, also paid for. From two to three, we have a round table, which means that everybody gets in small groups with a speaker and they can ask them any questions that they want. From three to four, we have Brad Jensen, who's going to bring it home and he's going to talk about turning your mess into your message. And uh, I don't know if you guys have heard Brad's, uh, Brad's story, but it's extremely, extremely powerful. And then we have ending remarks. All right. So for the sake of time, I'm going to keep cranking on this and uh, we're going to talk about the ticket options. All right. So ticket option number one is our virtual ticket. All right. So the virtual ticket option is $97. What this gets you is this gets you two day virtual access. You'll also get all the recordings as well. And this isn't like we're filming it on like a Facebook live or like our iPhone We're we're hiring a professional person to come in a videographer, a professional videographer to live stream it for you guys from like legit equipment, equipment that he spent like $10,000 on. Uh, so that's $97. Like I said, you'll get two day access access virtually. You also get all the recordings. All right. Then we have our virtual plus. All right. So this is 197 bucks. You get the same thing, two day access, all the recordings, and then you're going to get eight mini courses. So eight NLCA mini courses. Those topics are on mindset, social media, scaling, starting up your business, lead generation, client delivery, how to execute on Black Friday and January 1st, and also uh, an OFNC mini course as well. So you're going to get eight mini courses with your virtual ticket purchase. All right, then we got general admission. So general admission is $347 that covers your whole entire weekend. So it gives you two day access. In addition to that, get, that gets you lunch and dinner on Saturday. That gets you lunch on Sunday. And this also gets you access to the after party as well. You also get all the replays uh, sent to you too. All right, then we have our VIP ticket. So our VIP ticket is $997. You get the two day access. So you get everything that general admission gets, the two day access. You get all the recordings. You get lunch, dinner paid for on Saturday. Saturday, you get lunch paid for on Sunday, you get access to the after party. Uh, in addition to that, you'll also have access to a private in person mastermind that's going to happen the Friday prior to the event on Sunday, only 25 people can buy into this. And that private mastermind is going to be with yours truly. And uh, I think the topic I'm not 100% sure on the topic yet, but I think the topic is going to be all around how to build a seven figure online fitness coaching business. All right. So that will happen the Friday prior to the event. Uh, uh, we only have 20 spots available, uh, only 20 spots left uh, for that one. Uh, we started with 25. Okay. Uh, from there, we have our VIP plus option. All right. So the VIP plus option, uh, what that is, is you're going to get the two-day access, two-day general admission access. All right. You're going to get all the recordings. You'll get lunch, dinner on, on, um, on Saturday. You'll get lunch paid for on Sunday. You'll get access to all the recordings. You'll get access to the after party. You'll get access to the private 20, 25 person in-person mastermind with me Friday night. And in addition to that, if you buy the VIP plus, what you get is you also get a one hour one-to-one -one Zoom consultation with me to cover your biggest current bottleneck in your business. 
Oof. All right. That is a lot. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. And that's everything. That's all the updates I have on NLCA Live right now. And uh, this is going to be, oof, I'm really excited. Like I said, this is truly, in my opinion, the number one in-person event uh, for, for fitness coaches and coaches alike. All right, well, let's get into the topics. All right. So what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the unsexy shit. All right. So I'm going to give you a little recap on everything I already said, and then, and then we're going to get into, uh, get into it. All right. So why, why is this stuff important? There are so many business coaches out there that only focus on things that are marketable because it's self-serving to their own business growth, but they don't talk about the things that are not marketable that actually drive their business growth. And what we're going to be talking about here is what numbers you guys should be tracking and why you should be tracking them and what those numbers mean. So how to read the data. So ultimately you can make decisions that are going to grow your business. And knowing and understanding your business is how you scale. If you have no idea any of your metrics right now, it's not organized, it's disorganized, then you as a CEO cannot effectively make decisions that are actually going to drive the business forward. Data is knowledge and knowledge is power. I'm going to say that again, data is knowledge and knowledge is power. And if you know exactly what your biggest bottleneck is in your business at any given time, then you could focus you and your team's energy 100% on fixing that one bottleneck opposed to what most business owners do is they're very emotionally charged. They're like, oh, I think lead gen is bad. Oh, I think show up rate is bad. Oh, I think close rate is bad. Oh, I think this, I think this, I think this, I think this because they're driving off their feelings and then they're trying to fix all these problems and there's chaos in their business and nothing actually gets solved. If you want to be a calm, relaxed, successful CEO, then understand your business. All right. Now, hopefully I've sold you on the understanding part. Let's get into the actual numbers. What do you need to know? What do you need to understand? What does it mean? What is good? What is bad? Let's break it all down. Okay. So number one, you have to be able to know how many calls you guys are booking. What does this mean? This is a very easy one. This is a reflection of your volume. Everything starts at the top of the funnel here. The more calls you book, the more calls are going to show, the more calls are going to get an offer, the more calls are going to close, the more money the business is going to make. If the top of the funnel is not working, meaning you're not booking calls, the rest of the funnel is all affected. Okay. So number one, track how many calls you are booking. All right. What is this a reflection of your volume? Hold on. I have to burp. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. The second thing that you have to track, and I don't think this is a thing that a lot of business coaches teach, is how many of those calls actually occurred. All right. So it's great. You booked a call, but maybe that call doesn't actually occur until 30 days later or two months later. Therefore, they would not be tallied or counted toward the call occurred. All right. But if you booked a call today and that call occurred tomorrow, meaning it happened, right? Or it was set to happen rather, because it's different than show up, right? It's you booked a call. When is it on the calendar? And then the next one is, did it show? So don't mistake occurred with shown. All right. Occurred just means when is the call actually set on the calendar? Is it set one week out, a month out? Is it going to happen within this 30, 31 day or 28 day period, right? That's what calls occurred means, okay? So what is this a reflection of? This is a reflection of your turnaround time. How fast can you get a call booked and then occurred? Meaning how quickly can you turn around that call and get it scheduled within 24 to 48 hours after the booking, all right? The ideal metric here is you want 90 to 95% of the calls you booked that month to happen within the very same month, all right? So that, that's, a, that's calls occurred, all right? Now the next one is calls showed. So this may be a little confusing, so I'm going to try to break it down again, all right? So when you book a call, that means that you just booked an appointment. All right. Occurred means it's on the calendar. Okay. Shown means that it showed. All right. So for example, if a call, the, the call occurred column would be affected. If you booked that call today on February 15th 
And that call didn't happen until March 15th, because what that would mean is you booked a call, but that call never occurred within that month. Therefore, it wouldn't be tallied as occurred within that month. It actually would be tallied in the March month. All right. So now your call occurred as effective because your turnaround time isn't ideal. Right. Remember, we want to turn turn call bookings around within 24 to 48 hours. And if you do do that, then it then it counts in the call occurred column and that increases your call occurred rate. OK. Hopefully that breaks it down for you. All right, so the next one is calls shown. So of the calls that occurred, how many of them actually showed up for their appointment? Meaning they popped on the Zoom call or they popped on the phone call, you saw their face, you had a conversation, right? That's calls shown, all right? What is this a reflection of? This is a reflection of a multiple different things. Your turnaround time, your lead quality, because if it's not a good lead, they're probably not going to show. Your marketing, once again, if your marketing isn't clear and you can't motivate somebody to want to join your program and your marketing, they're probably not going to show, right? And also how well you and your team are executing your show up process. Remember in the pre, I think it was like two, two, uh, Two podcasts ago, I talked about show up rate. That's what I mean by executing the show up process, meaning you're doing all those little intricate things well. All right, so call shown, if this is below, so the, the KPI here is between 60 to 80%. If this is below 60%, that means your turnaround time could be off, meaning you're booking calls way too far out. If you're booking calls way too far out, the, the likelihood of them showing is gonna decrease because their motivation between the time you booked the call and the time the call happened, it means it probably went down, all right? So it could be turnaround time, it could be poor lead quality, it could be your marketing isn't getting people excited to want to show up, and you're not also executing the show up process. All right, the next one here is calls offered. So of the calls that showed, how many actually got an offer? All right, so an offer means that you presented the price, meaning here's the program, here's how much it costs, what are we going to do? Payment plan, pay in full. That's an offer. All right. A lot of businesses do not track this, and it's very important to track. The reason it's important to track is because this is a good indication of two things. One, your lead quality, because if you didn't make an offer, it could indicate that the, the reason you didn't make an offer is because the lead sucked. And you're like, oh, this, I don't even want this person in my program. Right. And then the second reason. So there's two here. The second reason is maybe you or your closing team isn't doing a good enough job leading them, right? So this is why it's so important to watch your watch your sales calls or watch your, your closing team sales calls is because you can see the truth, right? So if they're like, ah, oh, the leads suck, but and their offer rate is like in the shitter, right? Like their offer rate. So a good offer rate is 80, about 85% or above. But if their offer rate is really low, like 60%, you're like, hey, why is it so low? Oh, leads suck. But then you ask for a call recording, you watch the call recording and the lead is great. But for whatever reason, your closer isn't leading them to the finish line, not closing them in so many words, then you know that you have to train your closer a little bit more, right? So those are the two indicators of a low offer percentage. All right, number four is self-canceled, meaning how many calls did your team cancel? So we have a, maybe I'll do a podcast on it one day. It's, it's in our course, but we have a review process where our DM manager reviews the conversations from the calls that were booked that day. And if she doesn't think it was a good lead, she'll actually go into our sales team's calendar and cancel the call, right? And then, and the reason we do that is because we view all of our call slots as high high real estate, right? If our program, let's say our program is $10,000, right? Then we, we need to view every call slot as $10,000. If your program is $2,000, you need to view every call slot as $2,000. And if you're booking a high volume of calls, meaning you, you have no problem booking calls, like right now we book about 11 calls a day. If you have no problem booking calls, then you need to make sure that the calls that you're booking are of quality. So that's why we have that self-cancellation um, self cancellation process. And that's also why we track it. Because if we notice that we're canceling a ton of these calls, probably means that quality sucks. All right, the next metric that we track is um, how many times a prospect cancels or reschedules. All right, so we track cancels and reschedules and the number of that. All right, the, what, what that's an indication of is turnaround time, right? If the call was booked out too far out and they reschedule and cancel, it's probably because they lost interest, lead quality, how powerful your marketing is and how well you're executing the show up process, okay? The next thing we track is of those calls that cancel or reschedule, how many of them do we successfully get back on the books? All right, our, our metric here is we, we want to reschedule at least 50% of the calls that cancel. 
So if we had, let's say, 100 calls cancel in a month, we want to at least get 50% of those, so 50 calls, back on the books. Because sometimes people reschedule or cancel, and they actually really did have an issue, right? And maybe, maybe there was a death in the family. Maybe you know they did get a flat tire, right? And we always want to give them at least a second chance to prove themselves. And if we didn't do that, if, if, if I said uh, our KPI is 20%, we'll reschedule 20% of the calls, then we're not giving ourselves enough opportunity to reach our uh, our target, right? The target target being our financial targets and clients close target. Okay, so that's the next thing that we track. The next thing that we track after that is um, closed. So our closing percentage and how many, how many units we're closing, right? So units closed in addition to that also closing percentage, all right? So the reason units is, is so important is units is a measure of, of volume, right? It's a measure of how many clients are we selling. Uh, there's really three here, right? There's, so there's units sold, how many do we actually sell? There's closing percentage, which, which tells me the, a few things. It tells me the skill of our closers, and it also tells me how, how active they are off the call, meaning are they doing their follow-ups, right? Are they getting people back on the books? Usually closers with a higher closing percentage also are really, really good at follow-ups. Um, same thing with units sold. They're kind of they're kind of synonymous. And then the third one is cash, right? So if 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 I have an individual who has high cash, a closer who's who's bringing in high cash, but they have low volume, that tells me that they're really good at selling big packages. If I have an individual who has low cash, right, who doesn't bring in much money to the company, but has high volume, meaning they sell tons of clients. It tells me that they're probably smelling these, selling these itty bitty little packages. And the reason it's important to look at these three is you can have a closer who has a really high closing percentage, but also isn't bringing in much cash to the company, which once again tells me they're taking the easy way out and just trying to sell our lowest package to inflate their closing percentage and make it look better than it is. So I know I kind of went off on a tangent here and I know I'm talking about a lot of complex stuff, but th these are all things that we look at to make decisions um, and this is how we're scaling our company very, very fast. Okay, so for, I didn't give the KPI, but for calls closed, um, this is our KPI. So we run uh, about $40,000 a month in ad traffic, meaning we spend a lot of money on ads. And when you spend a lot of money on ads, your closing, your volume goes up, you're booking more calls, but your closing percentage goes down. But because your volume's high, it doesn't really matter that the closing percentage goes down. The reason the closing percentage goes down is because when you run ads, there's not, there's not a ton of, of no like, and trust because people see the ad, they get on a call, they kind of just meet you for the first time, right? Which I'm actually not gonna, I was about to go on another tangent there, but I didn't. Anyways, back to the back to the KPI. The KPI for us is 35% or above. We want above. Ideally, I want between uh, 35 and 45%. Uh, with the volume of ads that we're running. If you're a more organic process, I would say you want your closing percentage to be above 45%. Uh, that would be like my bare minimum metric. All right, so the next thing that we track is, is uh, contracted. So, hold on, I spelled that wrong. Contracted. Cool. Sorry, now I'm just speaking to myself. Uh, yeah, so the next thing we track is contracted, um, which which tells me, so what uh, an equation that I do at the end of every month is I'll take our contracted total and I'll divide it by how many clients we sold. And then I get the average ticket price, right? So if we sold $100,000 worth of deals and we sold 10 clients, that tells me that each ticket that we sold was $10,000 on average, right? And why is that important? Because you, once again, you wanna see how your closers are operating. Are they selling larger packages? Are they defaulting to your down sales, right? These are all important pieces of information. All right, the next metric that we track is collected. So of the contracted amount, how much of that was actually collected within the month. So this does not include your reoccurring payments. This is just of new contracted money, how much of that was collected within the month. So if you, if you contracted in the month of February, $100,000, and of that $100,000, you collected $30,000, then your collected versus contracted is 30%. Okay, see what I'm saying? So this does not include your reoccurring payments. This is just of new contracted money, how much, of, how much of that did you collect within the month? And to give you another example, let's say that you closed a package, it was $10,000, they put, uh, put $5,000 down on February 1st, and then they put another $2,000 down on February 20th. Technically, you collected 7,000 out of that 10,000 within the month, 
That's how you measure this. Okay. Why is that important? The reason that's important and the KPI is you want to, you want it to at least be 35%. You want to collect at least 35% of your total contracted. Why is that important? The reason that's important is as you scale and as you, you know, hire assistant coaches, hire DMers, hire VAs, or start running ads and spending a lot of money on ads, you, you need to make sure that you're collecting enough upfront to cover costs. And then on top of that, you have your reoccurring payments, which obviously, you know, that puts you in the green and beyond, but you want to make sure that you're at least covering your monthly costs with your cash collected. And then the reoccurring just kind of builds on top of that. All right. So those are all the things that we track. Those are all the reasons why we track them. These are all the KPIs that we look for. There is a lot more things that we track. <laughs> like I couldn't tell you how much fucking shit we track. It's insane. Uh, I'm very data driven, as should you be. Uh, but in terms of the sales stuff and sales team, these are the main metrics that I look at. I look at these twice a week. I look them. I look at them on Sunday, and I I look and see where you know where we're kind of fucking up, and then I'll make that the focus for the week. And then I'll check back in on Wednesday and look at the data and see how we're trending for that week and how things are progressing. Are we digressing? Are we progressing on the things that we're focusing on? And this allows me to kind of steer the ship and create projects to improve whatever area is our current biggest weakness. But that's it. That's enough talking from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was actually a really fun one for me to talk about. I geek out on this kind of stuff. Um, this is the unsexy stuff that really scales. So pay attention to this shit. And I promise you, you're going to have a lot of success.